Our subject for today is the quadri called the short, small man. This is the man, this is the anomaly. This is the man who is in society a pariah. He's a disenchanted, disenfranchised anomaly. He has no presence, he has no appearance, he has no personality. Nobody takes him seriously. There, are no, there is no advice of any consequence to implore the short, small man in any way because he hasn't been comprehended. That's the problem. To find out who he is and what he is and how to do it, how to ask the right questions and get the right prompts and the right answers. How to have integrity in the analysis. We're doing an internal and an external analysis. Everything that concerns the short, small man has to be practical, street smart, and testable. That's the most important thing of all. We want to be tested. Everything I say, strategies for the small, short man, the book, the text, the advice, not really advice, the understanding, the comprehension, never been done before, is a major contribution. You only know that when you talk to me. I'm showcasing for the ideas, I'm showcasing for the book. But you have to talk to me and I'm set to answer any question, any interrogation whatsoever. I believe what I'm saying, I mean what I say, I say what I mean. And I don't run away from anybody who wants to confront or encounter me on anything I'm saying because I have complete confidence about what I'm saying. The short, small man is a man who has, he's hideous. He's revolting to look at. He's intimidatable on appearance and presence. He's usually a man who's way out of shape. He's small, he's weak, he's vulnerable, he's a real patsy. And he needs a sweet personality to speak for him, to represent him, to stand good for him, to buffer him on his own. It's an impossible task. I don't offer him strategies for the small, short man, an answer. I don't offer him any results. This is a different type of approach, a different type of a book, and it's a very hard sell. Anytime you've got a man like me who's willing to speak exactly to the truth, exactly to the issues I see before me, it's a very hard sell. I don't do it with a personality. I don't need to, I have complete confidence in what I'm saying. So I don't need to sell it. I don't need to oversell it. I don't need to impress anybody. I'm not looking to impress anybody. I'm not looking to make friends and influence anybody. I don't care about that. And I don't care about how a man wants to come at me whether he wants to come with respect or he wants to insult me, whether he wants to call me a troll, a dwarf, a gnome, big head, big face, E.T. I've heard all that crap before. If he wants to come to me and he wants a street fight, he'll get that street fight. However he wants, I'll push back at him. I know how to do it. I'm not afraid to do it. I'm not intimidated to do it. I have that much confidence in what I'm representing and what I'm saying. Strategies for the small, short man. This is the real deal. It's a way, it follows the way I do it. Hard, gestalt, inspired by Fritz Perls. It's a here and now experience. It's confrontation and encounter in the arena. It's experiential. It's confrontive. 
It's exposing at every step and turn. It's not letting anybody get away with anything. It's not letting anybody shortchange me in a communication. When I communicate with a man, I expect respect. I, re I expect commitment. I don't expect a man to shortchange me in a communication, to look for ways to interrupt the communication, to bust up the flow, to make an excuse. Ah, I got a phone call from a cousin in Kalamazoo. Got to answer the phone call, got to answer the phone call. What kind of a phone call did you get? What kind of a cheap shot is that to interrupt a, a communication? Usually I'll let it go. I take it from whom it comes, but realize I'm very serious when I talk. I don't like to be interrupted. I don't like to be cheap shotted. I don't like to be evaded. I want to say what I need to say and say it completely and thoroughly. If someone doesn't want to listen, let them go. I'll keep on talking. I'll be the last man standing, but I'll have my say. But getting back to the strategies for the short, small man, I think this is, as I say, a major contribution. I can talk about it any time, any place, anywhere, in front of any audience, completely confident of what I'm saying. I have the experience and I have the knowledge. I have no credentials. I'm a mister, not a, not a professional. But that doesn't stop me, and I don't think that should matter at all when a man has something of consequence to say, and he knows how to say it, but more important than that, he's willing to be interrogated, answer all questions, I evade nothing. I don't get any mysterious phone calls coming from Kalamazoo where I've got to take the phone call, I've got to interrupt the phone. No, I don't interrupt anybody's flow of concentration. I will, I refuse to never insult a man like that by being abrupt and discourteous. Some people, when I talk, they walk away from me. Just walk away and be abrupt and discourteous. I hate to countenance a fool like that. We're offering something, or I'm offering, I should say. I'm offering it. I'm the only one I know I can rely on. Anybody else, I can't rely on them, whoever that may be. If a man's word, he's not behind the word, if he's not committed, what's he worth? In my book, he's not worth anything. He's a fake and a phony and a fraud, and I accept him as that. This is a fake, it's a phony and a fraud. But what we're offering in the strategies for the short, small man or what I'm offering, I should say, because I'm really the only one standing. I'm really the only one who's gonna do it. And what I do is I interview myself. I ask myself the question, so I play both roles. I play both the short, small man and the, uh, the theory and the practice. But what I say has to be testable, has to work out there in the environment, and it's worthless, and we recognize Many times, the environment overpowers biology. And I, when I talk about my subject, you feel what I'm talking about. You experience what I'm talking about. I make sure you do. I talk about it in such a way that it's so crystal clear the village idiot will understand what I'm talking about. And he may not agree with me, but he will say, hey, I understand the communication. I understand what you're trying to say, and that's all I ask. All I ask is a man who will talk to me and do it in good faith. I don't like to con continence some clown that can't go through a conversation without distracting, without interrupting, without changing the subject, and mostly without getting some phone call some important phone call, you see, from Kalamazoo. It's got to be answered right away. Hey, wait a minute. 
We're talking about something serious here. You're interfering with the flow of the conversation. I thought you came with good faith. Come to find out, this individual came for entertainment only. Come to find that out. After everything's said and done, come to find that out. But this is very serious. It's not a game. A lot of time, a lot of effort has been put into developing these ideas and saying them in a way that they have to be said so they get through, so they're communicatable. Communication is everything. I hate a miscommunication. I do everything in my power to avoid the very, very dangerous miscommunications in which my opponent can run a conspiracy theory, come back at me behind my back and insult me and completely make up things I never said. Or if he tried to confront me in front of my face, I would know how to push back on him. That's what I despise the most.